Welcome back to the Lowdown on Physics. This is screencast number four in a series on Unit 3 for Motion. Today we'll be looking at normal reaction forces. So let's start off by just considering the actual name normal reaction forces. What does it actually mean? So firstly we've got the normal force, that means that it's perpendicular to the surface. Secondly, there is a reaction force, so it's responding to another force that is applied. So we link back to Newton's third law of motion and that is that the force of A on B is equal but opposite to the force on A. So looking specifically at inclined planes, um, we, when we have a, an inclined plane, the normal force will continue to act at right angles to the surface and up if we're talking about it as opposed to a mass. So it, it continues to act up but at right angles to the surface. So your weight force however continues to act vertically down so it continues to point straight down. If we have a look at that diagrammatically what we're saying is your weight force mg will be vertical. The normal reaction force is always at right angles to the surface. So what that results in is only a fraction or you know, a vector component of your weight force is, is uh, equivalent to your normal reaction force. And the other component is going to act at an angle to the surface or parallel to the surface. So we've got mg sine theta, that's a force down the slope. We've got the normal reaction force equal but opposite to mg cos theta. So equal but opposite as indicated by the negative. And then a force down the slope of mg sine theta. This is breaking up the components so that they are perpendicular and parallel to the surface. When we have unbalanced forces, then we are going to have weight and normal reaction force no longer equal, which kind of makes sense as we saw in that diagram. The result is, however, that we now get a uniform acceleration down the slope. So F equals MA, or if we divide F by M, the result is A equals G cos theta. So if you have MA equals MG cos theta, that's the force down the slope, then we have, dividing it by M, g cos theta will find the acceleration down the slope. So acceleration is independent of mass. Mass has no effect on how quickly an object will accelerate. If we consider frictional forces, when we have friction acting um, up the slope, then friction will only exist, the size of the friction force will only exist when there is a force there that's going to cause it to move. So if we have a weight force acting down, a normal reaction force there. If we have some component friction, then the object will either move at constant velocity or not move if the friction is equal to the components of the weight force. So let's have a look at an example. We've got a 75 kilogram skier and they're moving down an icy slope at an incline of 20 degrees to the horizontal. Find for me the normal reaction force. So pause it and have a go, and then I'll give, do the answer. So if we look at our equation, N equals mg cos theta. So if we bring up a calculator, we have m was 75 multiplied by g, which is 10, and then cos theta. So we have cos of 20. Oops, let's try that again. So we get a normal reaction force of about 705 newtons. Let's have a look at the force down the slope. Down the slope was mg sine theta. So again, if we look at punching in those values, we get mg sine theta. It's a vector component. The force down the slope is 256.5 newtons. and the acceleration of the skier down the slope. So we have A equals G sine theta, which
which is also f divided by m. So we've got two possibilities. We can do the previous question. So we can do that value divided by m, which was 75. We get 3.42 meters per second. Alternatively, we can go g sine theta and we get exactly the same value for our acceleration. The skier continues skiing down the slope, passes over a fresh patch of snow. He travels at a constant velocity of 5 meters per second. Here's that key word, highlight it, circle it, do what you need to do. What's the frictional force acting on the skier? In this case, we know that the net force is zero, so we've got mg sine theta must be equal and opposite to the friction. So since we calculated um, the frictional force, sorry, the, the acceleration force or the force down the slope is 256.5 newtons, the friction must be equal and opposite, so it'll be 256.5 newtons up the slope. That's it. I'll see you next lesson.